to the next topic that uh, we give by Dr. Ranya Vasukun. She is uh, a research uh, scientist in uh, our project. So she will give the story about the genetic analysis of Maria outbreak in the southern Laos that we got the information that there are the outbreak in the Atapur province. So she will provide more information on the genetic analysis of this group of parasites. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank you, Dr. Aria. Um, in the talks by Professor Olivo and Dr. Aria yesterday, they have presented how the genetic surveillance was used in monitoring resistance markers and tracking the spread of resistance strains. And in this talk today, I will present another use case that genetic surveillance can deliver. It's the outbreak characterization use case, which we um, demonstrated in Laos. I hope that by the end of the talk, you will see how we can use genetic surveillance to discriminate between different outbreak drivers. In the past years, overall, we have a big reduction in uh, falciparum malaria cases in Laos. However, in a few isolated pockets of Laos, there have been some outbreaks. Um, during the 2020 to 2021 malaria season, at the province in southern Laos experienced an unusual increase in the number of Plasmodium falciparum cases. The National Malaria Program in Laos, whom we worked with in genetic surveillance, has asked us to investigate into the Atapura outbreak um, to see whether this outbreak has to do with drug resistance or was there a different factors that is uh, driving the outbreak like increased vector activity or human activity, for instance. And just like many projects, it is uh, the network of collaboration between partners that facilitates this investigation. So it started with SEMPE, the National Malaria Control Program in Laos, noticed the unusual increase in cases and requested Jen Red Mekong to investigate and determine the cause. Samples were then uh, collected by Romru and processed by Sanger Institute and analyzed by Jen Ray. So how can we use uh, genetic epidemiology to investigate the outbreak? Was the increase in transmission a result of more bites from infected mosquitoes? Or was there a selection of a, of a strain for some phenotypic trait like resistance to drug? One indication that we can use to help us determine the outbreak driver is to analyze the diversity profile of the population. And this can be measured using um, genetic barcodes. If we see normal diversity in the outbreak population, it indicates that the increased transmission is without selection. Whereas if we see lower diversity, it indicates a probable ongoing selection of a parasite population. Uh, in addition to this, um, we also analyzed the genetic markers of drug resistance and compared that to other periods. Um, before I move on to show you the findings, I want to quickly show how drug resistance can affect uh, diversity. So here we have normal diversity, um, then a new mutation that makes the parasite resistant to the anti-malarial in use arises, which mean uh, they would be able to survive the anti-malaria in juice. So the parasite with the new mutation multiplies and thrive, whereas other parasites are killed off by the drug, so the number stayed low. The new mutation rises rapidly in frequency and the overall uh, population diversity decreases. If you were here yesterday, you would have heard the explanation about genetic barcodes. So I'm not going to go into details, but just to say that genetic barcode is like a summary of the genome. It can tell us how similar 
the parasites are to one another. For instance, if we have high mismatches in the barcodes, we get low percentage of similarity. And this enables us to do analysis such as diversity profiling. Using the genetic barcode, we have seen a dramatic reduction in diversity of the parasite population in Atapur during the 2020 and 2021 season. The outbreak population is dominated by a single strand, which indicates selection of this particular strain. This figure is another way to show that there had been a dramatic reduction of population diversity in 2020 and 2021, where the outbreak occurred in Atapur. This reduction in diversity was due to a single strain that increased to high proportion, having started at a low frequency in 2017. Um, this strain is shown in red. This outbreak strain was largely restricted to the Atapur province with a hotspot in the Pruvong district. Analysis of the drug-resistant markers showed that this strain processes markers associated with resistance to chloroquine, sulfadoxine, pyrimethamine, and artemisinin. Interestingly, the Kelch 13 mutation that confers the artemisinin resistant was the R539T, not the Kelch 13 C5. 80Y mutation that dominates many parts of the lower Mekong region for many years. So previously, the KL1 KLLA1, which carries both the uh, C580Y mutation and the plasmepsin amplification, dominates the lower uh, Mekong region in, the, in southern Laos. And this coincides with the high prevalence of the C580Y mutation, which is shown in red. However, in 2000 and, uh, 2020, we see a shift in dominance in Atapur. Uh, we see a decreased a reduction in the C580Y accompanied by a sharp increase of the r 5 390 mutation. The R5390 mutants replaced the KL1 PLA1 parasite during the outbreak. In particular, what we observed was the decline or absence of the plasmepsin amplification associated with resistance to uh, peparoquine in the atopyl population in this period. Um, so what we see is the, the dark green color was almost completely disappeared. And the dark green is uh, showed the KL1 PLA1. But there was still um, some presence of the C580Y without the plasmepsin amplification uh, still circulating at a low frequency during the outbreak period. Um, to better understand the dynamic of the parasite groups, we analyzed the population structure using a related nest heat map based on the pairwise distant matrices of the genetic barcodes. Um, I know that this looks like a complex uh, figure and there's a lot going on here, but essentially what it's trying to show is that um, if the samples are similar to one another, they, they are in blue. And if the samples are different to one another, they are in red. Um, so this uh, big group over here is the R5390 from the Atapur outbreak. And we see that the parasites are strikingly similar to one another. And this heat map highlights the clo uh, clonality of the R5390 group which indicates the, the high level of inbreeding within this group. Um, the heat map also shows that the C580Y are not as highly inbred compared to the R5390. And, the, and another thing that this heat map shows is that 
the R5390 and the 580Y groups, they are not related to one another. There's a large distance between them. So in the um, findings that I've presented so far, we have seen that a multi-drug resistant strain with Kelch 13 R5390 is driving the outbreak in Ethica. So we then looked into the origin of this parasite using the genetic barcode. Uh, we identified that the Atapa outbreak R5390 group A was highly related to the R5390 um, mutants that was collected in 2008 to 2000 and between the 2008 and 2013, which came from Thailand and Cambodia. And they shared about 80% of the barcode similarity, suggesting that the Atapro outbreak um, R5390 is a descendant of the R5390 mutant population that was first detected in Western Cambodia in 2008. And this map here uh, shows the genetic connection between these uh, earlier R5390 group and the latest R539 and how they are connected when, when we combine these two uh, data sets, we see that they, they are related to one another. Okay, so now that we have seen the, uh, the findings, once we have determined the course, we communicated the findings to the public health experts to support their decision-making with the control measures. Um, so we are coming to an to the end of my talk, I hope that uh, we have demonstrated to you another use case of genetic surveillance in action, particularly the outbreak characterization. In the Atapro outbreak, we have found that the outbreak was driven by uh, pre-existing multi-drug resistant parasites. Understanding the character of the outbreak enables public health to identify optimal intervention for outbreak control the benefit of using uh, an existing genetic surveillance that is in operation is that it enables us to deliver findings to public health authority, authorities within the same uh, malaria season, which allows for a timely response to the outbreak. Lastly, I would like to thank you all of our funders and collaborators that are way below, beyond this list. Um, without great co network collaboration, we would not be able to do any of this. Um, but for the work that I presented here in, in the slides, I would like to specifically say thank you to uh, Simpei, um, Dr. Weir Pong, Dr. Gao, Dr. Nian, Dr. Mei Fong, the Genray team, Professor Dominic, uh, Dr. Roberto, Dr. Richard, Professor Arian, and Professor Nick Day. Um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Varanya, um, for uh, for this uh, uh, great presentation. Um, I, well, I I would like to also give my words of thanks to uh, to Simpe and to all the control programs that uh, that uh, have supported us uh, in, in in this analysis. Um, I I think if I if I can just um, uh, look uh, for one if i can just um, comment for a second about the um some of the images that dr varanya showed you um what is interesting here is that also you've you've seen some new types of maps um these maps uh, have to do with um identifying strains and showing how they um how they spread showing where they're present and showing how they're connected to each other and as you as you've been able to see we've been able to take more historical data from whole genome sequencing and actually show uh where we think these strains have originated and uh, how they're related to previous strain to, to previous uh, uh, parasites that we've identified also uh, one of the exciting findings in this outbreak were, is basically that different drug-resistant strains are 
somewhat fighting each other uh, for, uh, for dominance. And this is probably driven by our choices of, uh, of uh, um, therapies. And it's interesting how the C580Y and uh, KEL1, PLA1 strains seem to have decreased in numbers significantly uh, after uh, DHAP paracrine was, uh, was abandoned. Um, I think we have, uh, uh, Dr. Siv is uh, trying to ask, ask something. Dr. Siv, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I have uh, two uh, questions to the last speaker. Uh, one, one um, uh, we are noted that there is a, a prison of uh, R5-390 uh, in Atapa province, and also this club has been the try to replace C580Y in the other uh, the provinces. Um, but maybe they're linked to outbreak. But my question is, um, you also had been mentioned that from 2008 and 2013, uh, the sample from Cambodia and Thailand, especially in Cambodia, they have found this um, R5-390 seem to be uh, uh, related with, with the same the, the origin or uh, there is a, a can we conclude or conclude that there is as a um a spread or, or what um this is the first question and uh, um, the second question is uh, you um you, you you can see that the use case or genetic barcode here um um can uh, you have been the put hypothesis? Um, one is uh, whether we can use your genetic barcode to, uh, to to see the situation linked to outbreak, and 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 one one question you you have been raised about the whether the more biting um, the hypothesis in in your your thought. Your, your your presentation so um but i don't see the what the conclusion is uh, of that whether there is a, a link or how how can we conclude how can we say that uh, by using genetic barcode to to address is more by thing thank you i think thank you dr Sif, for the question um to to answer the question the first question you're asking about whether um the R5390 in Atapur is related to the one in Cambodia that, uh, much earlier, right? We, from the genetic barcodes, we saw that there are 50%, sorry, 80% similarity in the barcodes. But we also um, did some further uh, analysis using the whole genome sequencing. Um, with the IBD analysis, and we also found that they are um, in IBD, they are related to one another in that way. Um, yeah. And with, is there anything you want to add? Uh, I, I just, I wanted, just to wanted to mention, to mention one, one more detail. <clears throat> so, because Dr. Siv asked whether we can uh, think of it as a spread. And in a way, yes. However, um, the, the, the parasites, as, as Varanya just pointed out, they're not identical. They're not exactly the same parasites that were circulating in Cambodia 2008, but they are the direct descendants of those. So what we think is that that strain has initially spread to Northern Cambodia, to Thailand, and something happened about three years ago, maybe four years ago, that they have also acquired some other, um, uh, some other ancestry and mixed with some other strain. And after that, they have caused the outbreak. Is that correct, Varanya? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. And, and, and to address the second question about how can we use genetic barcodes to to see whether there has been an increase um, 
the, more, the, bites. more bites with the mosquito. <laughs> so for us, um, what we did was we tried to use the diversity profile. So how, our hypothesis is that if there's just normal, if there's like more bites, we wouldn't see um, the, you know, we wouldn't see the diversity of the population goes down, but it would either be the same, remain relatively the same, or it would have been increased. And so that's why when we, that was um, just kind of our hypothesis going into this investigation. So when we started this investigation and we saw that the diversity was dramatically reduced, it gave us the indication that, oh, this is, there, there has been a selection going on. That there is some, um, yeah, advantage to, to these like uh, parasites that have been selected.